trial method or the equal interval are usually better for data that have a somewhat uniform distribution. They fall into generally equal classes between all the data. Okay. Let's try just as another example this dot density. So if I click here on the left under my quantities, say dot density, I'm going to pick pop 2013 as my field. Click on that. Put that into the map. I'm going to accept all the defaults and just say apply. And then take a look at the map. And what do you think about this one? Just any thoughts? Better or worse than the last one? Or just different? So now what it's done is it's taken that population field and then it randomly adds more dots to the polygon where the population is higher and fewer dots where the population is lower. So again, conveys a different message, almost like it's covered in ants or something, but, but it's also a fairly intuitive method for showing something like population or, or quantitative data. If we do graduated symbols here under quantities, again, just as a quick demonstration, we can say population 2013 and say apply. And now you can see it takes as a background, it fills in the polygon, and then it adds this circular symbol that has a, a radius proportional to that population. So, anybody like this the best? The worst? In the middle? <laughs> I don't know. What's your favorite of the ways we've looked so far for these data? Dot density. Dot density? Any others? I'm just curious. Colors? I think colors, you kind of like this one? Yeah. Yeah, and just like um, anything else, you can customize that background color if you like. You know, maybe make it Try to make the symbols stand out a bit more. I don't know, I'm just playing around here. This won't work. Just say apply. It also depends on, to some extent, the base map you choose. Yep? Um, yeah, we could add labels to it, and we, we're going to add labels in a minute, and there are ways to, to label the value itself associated with it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then I like that one. <laughs> On a number with it? Sure. Right? This one's more like bigger and smaller rather than absolute values, for instance. All right. Where are we? Okay, so there's a couple of tools I want to show you for finding things in your data set that can be pretty useful. The first one you're already familiar with was this identify tool. In our catalog, we clicked on something and then we got a preview of all the attributes associated with that polygon. Um, for something like states, you know, I can figure out very quickly which state that is and also a snapshot at the population. I use this a lot when the data aren't something as familiar to me as the state borders. If it's something like a map of soils and I can't remember exactly which one I'm looking at out of five or six adjacent ones, I click identify click on it and I can see, oh, that's this soil type, that soil type, and so on. You can also specify, using this drop down at the top, which layer you want to identify from. The default is to whatever's on top. 
So if I click on any of these, it's going to go to whatever's on top. If I turn my USA Major Cities back on, for instance, let's see if I can find one next to one of my polygons, right? It's going to pick the city and not the state underneath it. You can also restrict that selection to a specific layer in the map. Another useful tool is the find tool. So here you can search through all the attributes to locate and identify something in your map. And the find tool is this uh, pair of binoculars up here at the top. So if I click on that, for some reason this tool takes a few seconds to open. But let's use it to find a city in the United States. So somebody holler out a city. Washington? All right. Let's see if we can find, I'm guessing you mean Washington, D.C., right? D.C., let's see if we can find it. So here what we're looking for is features. We're going to look in visible layers is the default. Again, we can restrict it. So I'm just going to say USA major cities. So it's not going to look in states and get confused. In find, I'll just type Washington. And let's see what comes up. So it found 23 objects. They're all in the USA major cities layer. I have several for Washington, D.C., and then I also have this different Washington, actually a few of them. And I'm honestly not sure which state those are in. But what I can do is start clicking on any of these rows and then notice that it flashes at the location. These crosshairs fly in and illuminate where that city is. So apparently there's a city called Washington, Washington. It must be looking in the state field or something, right? I don't think there are that many cities called Washington, Washington. But if I click on Washington, D.C., Right, I can see it flash there. I can also right click any of these rows, just like usual in ArcGIS, and it's gonna give me a list of options for things I can do. I can flash, which is just the same as if I clicked on it. I can also zoom right to it. So if I right click and say zoom to, it'll bring me right to Washington, D.C. And I'll flash again. You can also create a bookmark directly from it. And there are a few other features here. What's another city, just as an example? Clemson? No. Let's see what comes up. I'm not hopeful, but search for Clemson, no objects found. We'll get there someday. <laughs> What's another city? Atlanta. All right, so we search Atlanta. Flash, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan to it instead, right? So it's just gonna move my map over without zooming. And if I wanted to, I could right click and create a bookmark there. The default name for it, if I go to my bookmarks, is whatever I searched for, so Atlanta. So now I can zoom out with a bookmark, go to my lower 48, go back into Atlanta. So any questions on these tools? All right. Sorry? It's not the same one. It's not the same. So, we qualify the results, but it's not all in one and the same. Let me see. Let me see what you mean. I mean, what we got here, not the same. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's found, they're all in the same layer, okay. right? There, it just found the word Atlanta in different columns in that attribute table. So if I open the attribute table for USA major cities,
And then I'm going to just do a quick search to find Atlanta. Okay, so here I can see Atlanta shows up one, two, uh, three, four, five, five times in that one row in this attribute table. So it found it five different times in the find tool because there were five instances there, but they're all associated with that same location, with that same point. Does that make sense? Really? <laughs> That's where I'm going on vacation. <laughs> All right. 